Hey everybody. <laughs> um, I know it's been a while since you guys seen me. Um, I just want to first and foremost say thank you to everybody that has been very supportive and understanding and just send me their light and their love. Um, just my way. Um, took me a while to record this because I wanted to try my best to not be a crybaby. <laughs> no promises or guarantees but um june 3rd a beautiful beautiful person that came into my life um passed away let's get into the backstory of how i met brenda um so the Target near my house, she used to work there, and I used to go there for popcorn, y'all. Now, I ain't gonna tell y'all my little secret about the popcorn, but I used to get my snacks there before I would go on my little adventures, my little fun adventures. And um, they used to never be open, and I remember talking about it, but um, if I'm not mistaken, it was the month of April last year. And I walked into the store with my mom and we was talking about May because May is my grandma's birthday and um, Cardinals. And she tuned into the conversation while getting our popcorn together. And ironically, the day of my abuela's birthday is the day that her mom passed away a few years ago. And when she would see Cardinals, she would think of her mom. But the next time that I saw her, you know, I remembered her. I was like, hey, like, you know, this is, you know, um, I remember you. And I told my mom, I was like, if I see her again, I'm going to get her number to see if she wants to hang out. And that's how it started. I got her number. I invited her to some birthday activities. And, um, you know, she just became part of our group. She just, her laugh was just so infectious and just so... It just always made me giggle. I feel like nobody could do her laugh. Like, nobody can do her laugh. Like, her laugh is just one-on-one. -on -one. And um, over the last few months, I feel like we started clicking. Like, so many conversations, so much girl time that, you know, I started to get to know Brenda for Brenda, right? And hearing her laugh... <laughs> You know, and pick her up from work and drop her at home where we would giggle and, you know. One thing that, um, I really, like, we used to always find funny. <laughs> Is that sometimes we would get in the car and it would be a song that she didn't know. <laughs> she never heard like there was this one time actually recently we got into a friend's car and he was playing a song i didn't hear he was like i don't know if you heard this song so he puts the song on and um <laughs> you know he plays it and she never heard the song because she said i didn't hear the song but she's in the back singing that you know trying to get the lyrics together like if she heard that song a thousand times and she would do that she would do that whether she knew the song or not. She would figure out the melody and catch on so quick. I used to always make me laugh. She wasn't vegan. But I just want to say shout out to my beautiful people that aren't vegan. But they definitely will make sure that I eat. And I remember, I don't know if we just remember this, but when we was leaving Moondog, and we went to get food and me and Melissa got the vegan wings and she was like I see you get the vegan wings and she was like now nah, I'm gonna be chicken wings <laughs> she was just herself for anybody that didn't get to meet her you know um I come on here and I always try to uplift people right I'm always like, beautiful people, you gotta stay strong, do it. Wanna, you know, we could do it, push it, don't stop, won't stop, can't stop. You know, I try my best to uplift because I know how it feels to 
I know how it feels to need support and help. And even though you feel like you could do it, it's good to hear it. Um, and these past few weeks, I just wasn't in the mood to uplift. I wasn't even in a place to uplift myself. And I go back to saying, that's why I thank my community that <laughs> helped me get out the bed to help me eat, to take me out the house, to just offer kind words, hugs, prayers to the individuals that called me every day to make sure I was okay. I'm so grateful for you because this has been so tough. This has been very difficult for me death is inevitable i know but i i, I want to say they need to teach a class or give lessons on for everybody with grievance um it's okay to not be okay it's okay to people that are strong to not be strong you know, I tried to um, get myself to get back to the groove and go back to work. And, you know, bills don't stop. They don't cancel. <laughs> you know, responsibilities. But you know when you just don't have motivation? Like, you just don't give a fuck? Like, you know, people say, be strong, you're strong strong you could do it it's all my people that are strong and carry weight I've always been a strong one I've always been the one to hold it down and check on others I don't know about y'all but when certain things happen in your life I don't want to be strong I want to feel I want to be sad and I know it's not okay to stay in places like this, but I have been so strong in so many things that I just keep pushing for, keep pushing for, keep pushing for. But I don't push through it. I don't feel it. I don't hear it. I don't deal with it. I just move. Everybody grieves differently, and that's also something else. You know, some days are like good for me able to get out of the house it's just like fuck all this shit i ain't doing nothing this is real this is life it's not all peachy and i think sometimes we want it to be peachy i don't know about y'all i want it to be peachy <laughs> you don't talk about i'm talking about me yeah, anybody that can resonate and relate you know this is for us this is for us, for, for the ones. I want it to be awesome. I just want to say to like anybody that is experiencing grief, has experienced grief, um, be kind on yourself. People say with time it will get better, you know, um, I found myself micromanaging me and I want to break it down. So this passing made me realize I didn't grief, grief passings that has, I have experienced in my life that were meaning very meaningful to me, you know, because you have people when you're young, it was kind of hard for me to understand that when I was young. So, and I don't want to excuse that and say that wasn't meaningful for me. It's just more like, but as you get older, you like, wow, this is death. Like, you know? So when I was younger, I kind of just pushed forward. I kind of just numb my feelings. I kind of just distracted myself. I kind of just wanted to be the superhero and make sure everybody else was okay. And I've been that way for a really long time with a lot of things. And I'm unlearning that. And this made me feel like, whew, I got to unlearn that. I still got work to do, y'all. And that's okay. 
welcome to the human experience. Um, there's no right way to grieve. And I say that because, so when I was younger, and I'm like, let's scratch that off. For a long time, we're gonna say like let's get let's get to the gritty. Like for a long time, I um if something bad happened in my life, I avoided it. Like, let's come on, like come on, let's get it. I avoided it. I avoided, I didn't want to feel it, I didn't want to work through it. I, well, honestly, at that time I didn't know the that that phrase, let's work through it, let's heal, let's work through it. I didn't know that. It was it was something's bad happening, so we're going to just work. We're going to bust our butt. We're going to hang out with people, hang out with friends, hang out with company that maybe wasn't the best. Maybe it was not, you know. But we're going to hang out with people, and we might get our drink on. It, not my 90% we get our drink Because we're avoiding, right? So, you know, this experience... Um, I didn't want to avoid. I didn't want to avoid. But what I realized with I didn't want to avoid, I want to feel I'm micromanaging myself to hurry up because I don't like the feeling. And I don't know if anybody else is going through, like I said, a grief or loss or maybe going through a tough time. So you're trying to speed up the process. And that's, I was trying to time myself. Oh, we're going to get back in the groove of things. We're going to get back in the groove. I'm, 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 I'm trying to hurry me I'm trying to rush me and then a flip side of trying to rush me I'm checking on everybody else that may have encountered because I'm trying to I have always been the one to check to to make sure everybody else is good that's just me and that is like that's I know that's part of why I'm on earth right my light working abilities right but with that, I'm distracting myself from feeling what I got going on. And I got to practice compassion. I got to be kind to myself. I got to be patient. And I'm saying this to the people that can resonate and relate to what I'm talking about. And even if you may not understand, that's okay. But I'm just sharing because I feel like there's somebody that that don't, can't really grasp what they're feeling. And maybe they're feeling what I'm feeling. And I don't know. So I got to just talk about it. I got to just say it. Just It's on my heart to say. And um, don't be afraid to ask for help. That is something that, you know, I thought that I was like, ah, I'm getting out of not being afraid. But this experience, I don't want to ask for help. I kind of want to, I don't want to put my sadness on someone else. So I want to deal with it by myself. Oh, support is so important because whether, and, and there's different types of support. And I want to say that too, because I think me and me in the past, I wanted support to look a certain way. And you can't tell people how to support you. You know, everybody loves differently, supports differently. They, they, they're there for you differently. But they're there. Don't knock that. And um, the support that I've been receiving, some just listen. You know, everybody deals with death differently. So some may not have the right things to say. Some, they try to make you laugh. Some feed you. <laughs> yeah, I'm a foodie. Those are the ones that know I'm a foodie, but I've been trying to eat better. And I'm like, let me tell y'all too. Everything I said, we got to eat whole food, plant-based, raw, vegan. I had not been eating right because that's one of my coping mechanisms, my food. And I'm building a better relationship with food. But this experience got me back to back in the back ways. And if you go back to your back ways, don't judge yourself for going backwards. Don't judge yourself. Don't be hard on yourself for maybe you're trying to move forward from that and you end up there. You know, and that was also then. So now I'm dealing with grief and now I'm judging myself because I'm going the path that I don't want to go. I wasn't supposed to, you know, you, you got to be flexible. You got to be adaptable. You got to be loving 
unconditionally loving yourself through anything you're facing and that has been i've been my biggest critic <laughs> during this time don't stop believing yourself because you're falling down don't stop if you believe in god and the higher power don't stop believing in god because there's dark times you're facing don't stop losing hope and faith and self and god and your higher power yo some days i don't want to do nothing <laughs> yo yo like i don't i don't want to what <laughs> You know, I, I just, survivor's guilt is something that I just learned. That that's actual thing. So, I know I've been dealing with that. You know, if I find myself laughing and in a good space, I'm, you know. And I know she wouldn't, I know she don't want that for me. I just miss my friend, you know. Like, I want to call her right now, but like, yo. What's up? What we doing? Like, where we going? Where we heading? Like, hey, come on. We got, we work today. I miss my friend. I, I miss my friend. I love you, Brenda. I miss you so much. Like, I miss you. Such a beautiful soul. <clears throat> and then I find myself wanting to live all the things that we said we was going to do. All the things that she did that brought light into my life. I just want to honor her. And then I find myself angry. Why are we had to encounter this why did she have to go through that why so is it's also that you remember all the plans that you guys make i just part of me don't want to really dive into the reality of it either you know grief is like so much emotions and you just gotta give yourself time. But I don't know about y'all, but grief also brings back throwbacks of sadness and other areas in your life that you haven't dealt with. Grief is not easy. And a lot of people think grief is just grieving over somebody that passed away. It's not even that too. Sometimes you gotta grieve like things that don't even resonate with you anymore. Like old self, like old friends, like they still here and shit. Like I'm really big like on that God sends angels through animals, angel numbers, um, people. She's definitely was an angel in my life that came in a time that I could have dabbled in some silly things, but a friendship was built. And I thank God for her all the time. Like I do. But I want to share this with somebody. We have to be open to receive the messages of God. Because sometimes we we be like, Mwah. that we don't. We miss out, right? When I came back home and I didn't want to eat. I, this was like 48 hours. I didn't want to eat. I didn't want to drink water. I didn't want to get out of bed. She gave me a meal. And I have it, you know? So this is a letter from a random person a random person i opened the letter i do I have the envelope yes it was the envelope was like this i'm not gonna show my address but the envelope had the lady's address and the first thing i noticed her address was that her address was a p.o box but it was in the same p.o box like me like of course not the same p.o box number but she has a p.o box in the same place i got a p.o box so I said, like, okay, let me open this. I didn't want to do nothing that day, but I said, let me open this. And I'm going to read it because I feel like God uses people. And it was that day that I didn't want to get up. And this lady, her mail was sent May 30th. I forgot where I saw. But it got, yeah, May 31st. She sent it out. But I got it that day says, Dear Jolanda, I'm a volunteer in your neighborhood. I'm writing you because I would like to share an uplifting thought from the Bible. People around the world deal with problems that cause them to feel sadness, anxiety, and even pain. May Many are suffering because of an illness or because they lost a loved one. Do you think life will ever get better? The Bible provides a reassuring answer to that question. Revelation 21 4 says death will be no more neither will mourning nor outcry nor pain be anymore 
the problems that can make life seem hopeless today, such as sickness and death, will no longer exist and we will be able to enjoy life forever in paradise here on earth. So, oh, you know, when I saw that, when I read that, I said, I gotta get up. I gotta move my body. And I remember somebody that checked in on me and was like, yeah, move your body and please do something for your body. And this is grief. But this is me. This is my, this is what I'm going through right now, you guys. And um, I've always tried to be as transparent and honest on this page with you guys as possible because I love you guys and I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. I have fears, I have doubts, insecurities, flaws. Why this happened, I don't know why. Like, you know, I don't know. But I'm just trying not to stop my life and stay here. And it's hard. But if anybody's feeling this, I'm giving you hugs and kisses of what I got left because I get it. I get how it feels. To just want to give up and be in sadness and be in darkness and just be like, fuck it. Like, who cares? Maybe sometimes we need the who cares. Maybe we so stuck on bills and responsibilities that we lose sight of the bigger picture. But you're not alone. So don't be afraid. It's okay to ask for help. It's okay to ask for support. It's okay. It's okay to pause. It's okay to not know. Going through change is tough. Going through unexpected moments in life. And I know when I post this, it's gonna be reach the people it needs to. I just hear, man. He's really been helping me through. Him, my universe, my ancestors, my guides. I wanna read you guys something at her service. They gave out cards. Don't grieve me. For now, I'm free. I'm following the path God laid for me. I took his hand when I heard him call. I turned my back and left it all. I could not stay another day. To laugh, to love, to work or play. Tasks left undone must stay that way. I found that peace at the close of day. If my parting has left the void, then fill it with remembered joy, a friendship shared, a laugh, a kiss. Ah yes, these things I too will miss. Be not burdened with times of sorrow. I wish for you the sunshine of tomorrow. Her little, her little short self. Her laugh, man. My life has been full. I'm saving much. Good friends, good times. A loved one's touch. Perhaps my time seemed all too brief. Don't lengthen it now with the undue grief. Lift your heart and share with me. God wanted me now. He said about what she's doing right now in heaven i know my pretty lady is, is reunited with her family that she loves you know and i'm just like give my grandma a kiss for me and the my animals that passed july 11th we will be doing at starting at six probably at 8 p.m do for two hours but we will be doing a live pertaining to grief if you've been experiencing grief if you just feel a certain way you don't know which way to go what to do you just need a listening ear whatever you're feeling um we ask you to tune in we ask you to join us so i hope to see you there love you guys